Okay, so this is the continuation of the brain lecture, learning outcomes three and four. Basically, we're going to be talking about the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and also the epithalamus. Just a little bit about the epithalamus. And then we're going to be uh, covering the cerebellum. So the diencephalon, if you guys look at uh, I think the first slide of the whole lecture, you're going to see that the diencephalon is going to be divided in three parts, the epithalamus, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. Usually we just talk about the thalamus and the hypothalamus because they have several different functions. The epithalamus is sort of basically where the pineal gland is going to be located in um, there's not much to talk about it, so that's why we, when we talk about the diencephalon, we usually just mention the thalamus and the hypothalamus. But nevertheless, here's um, our epithalamus, so like the name says, epi on top of the thalamus, and it's going to be this compartment right over here. So here's your thalamus, therefore this compartment right over here is going to be your epithalamus. And if you look closely, you can see that the epithalamus is going to be where your third ventricle is going to be located. And the other structure that we can find on the epithalamus that's important is going to be your pineal gland. So your pineal gland is important, especially because it produces uh, melatonin. Melatonin. Okay and um, therefore it also regulates your day and night cycle. So that's what um, you should know about the epithalamus. Now let's talk about the thalamus. Now the thalamus is a little bit more complex basically because um, it has several different structures to it. Um, it's going to be formed by the walls also of the third ventricle and there is going to be a right and left, what we call a right and left thalamus and they're going to be divide, divided by the interthalamic adhesion. So there's going to be like a little, little dot that we call interthalamic adhesion and therefore on one side of the hemisphere you're going to have the right thalamus on the other side of the hemisphere you're going to have the left thalamus so that's why we say there is a right and left thalamus uh, as you can see it has sort of this egg-shaped structure right over here and it has several different compartments okay several different compartments and if you can look over here, we're going to have an anterior, what we call anterior group, a medial group, a ventral group, a posterior group that's subdivided into three other groups and a lateral group. You don't need to know any of these functions. Okay, so this part you don't need to know. Or this table you don't need to know. Okay, because I don't want you memorizing any of this. But you should know that um, that in the thalamus that's where in about 95 percent of your sensory information is going to be passing through the thalamus and we did talk about this previously and from here you should know where it goes to. Okay, So you should know that it's going to go to structures that are going to be located posterior to the central sulcus. Here we have the hypothalamus, so like the name says, hypo below the thalamus. Um, it's going to be an important structure basically because um, it's going to have certain structures that are going to be important for production of different types of hormones. And here you can see um, 
all the main functions of the hypothalamus so you can see how important the hypothalamus is. Um, it's going to secrete lots of different um, types of hormones and we don't have we don't cover the endocrine chapter um, but you should know um, that the hypothalamus is important for a lot of the main functions like control of blood pressure, control of heart rate, sort of um, tells you if you're hungry, if you're thirsty, your sexual desire, things like that, okay? Um, there are a few structures that I want you to know. Um, basically, um, the hypothalamus is going to form the floor of the third ventricle. So here's your thalamus right over here. So here's your thalamus. So on top of the thalamus you're going to have your epithalamus and therefore your hypothalamus is going to be right over here below the thalamus. A few structures that we want to know about is um, the first one your infundibulum right over here which basically is going to connect the hypothalamus to your pituitary gland and your pituitary gland is going to be important for lots of different hormonal secretions too. There's going to be a structure called the mammillary body right over here and this mammillary body is going to be located on the posterior wall of the hypothalamus and um, I guess that's it for the hypothalamus, but I did highlight all the different structures that are linked to your hypothalamus, all the different nuclei, and basically their functions are all laid out in this table, but um, just when you think about the hypothalamus, I want you to think about a lot of um, survival functions like I mentioned previously, so heart rate, blood pressure, things like that, okay? Things in general. Now let's talk about the cerebellum. Now the cerebellum, uh, cerebellum means that it's a small brain, therefore it does look like a little tiny brain on the back of your skull. So it's this structure right over here. It's going to have some layers just like your brain. It's going to have hemispheres so we can see right over here on this slide you're going to have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. But we are going to have a structure right down the middle that divides the right and left hemisphere that's called a vermis. Okay, so in terms of main structures that's what I wanted you to know about the um, cerebellum. Okay. Now I want you to pay close attention to the histology of the cerebellum. Basically we have um, three main cell types or three main layers of the cerebellum. So if you look over here, the outer layer is what we call, which goes all the way to here, is what, what we call the molecular layer. Then we have this layer right over here that contains these cell bodies and these are the Purkinje cells so this layer is called the Purkinje, Purkinje cell layer. And then the last layer which is this internal layer right over here is what we call the granule cell layer. Okay, so again, the outermost, closer to the surface, is the molecular layer. The middle one is the Purkinje cell layer. And the most internal one is what we call the granule cell layer. Now the outermost, the molecular layer, is going to contain the dendrites of the Purkinje cells. Okay, so molecular layer, molecular layer contain the dendrites 
of the Purkinje cells. The middle layer, which is the Purkinje cell layer, is going to contain the cell body of the Purkinje cells. And the most internal layer, which is your granule cell layer, is going to contain, like the name says, granule cells. Granule cells, but it's also going to contain the axons of the Purkinje cells. Okay? So again, molecular layer contain the dendrites of the Purkinje cells. The Purkinje cell layer contains the cell body of the Purkinje cells. The granule cell layer contain granule cells plus the axons of the Purkinje cells. So if you look over here, these little lines over here that are coming out over here, these are the axons of the Purkinje cells. Okay, so that's what I want you to know um, about the cerebellum in terms of um, function. It's basically going to control a lot of the motor activities, especially things that uh, we don't have to think much about. So your subconscious coordination of movements like walking, jogging, and things like that. Okay. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email.